Well, the time has finally come. My cable has come in, Digiflex NK2-6. And I've got my new trick connectors. And I've got my rings to label them. So I'm just gonna make one cable because they're all exactly the same concept. I have dozens of cables to make. I bought 60 pairs of these. I'm not gonna make all 60 pairs right now. But here we go. So the first thing to know is put your boots on before you do anything else because you'll forget and then you'll be kicking yourself. And I take these rings off. colored ones on. I used to buy colored boots, but those were like a buck thirty a piece and these rings are 30 cents a piece. And if you want to change the boots after, you got to unsolder everything, but these rings, you can change them without unsoldering. So this is the way to go. Don't buy the colored boots unless you have a very specific reason for it. Now, cables themselves are not directional inside at least for microphone cables maybe something else is but this is not and the brtb 3224 bulk cable that i used to use actually had direction arrows that said signal flow not because there's anything different inside the cable itself but just so that when you pick one up on the ground you know which way this is going is this going to a stage box or is this going to a return this doesn't have that so it doesn't matter which end i solder onto what otherwise i'd have to pay attention So that was one end. I love that sound. And some people say don't put a colored boot on the female end because that's the end that everyone's going to see on video and that looks ugly if it's colored. And I kind of agree with that somewhat, but I do it anyways because I don't care that much. It's nice being able to just pick up an end and you know, okay, this is the 20 footer, this is the 30 footer, so on. Red for me is three feet. I know everyone's probably got their own different color conventions. Now the next step is to strip this. So you want to take off 18 millimeters of jacketing and then four millimeters off the wire jackets themselves. So I have a little ruler on the bottom of this silicon pad here. And we'll put the thumb right there. Just go easy because you don't want to rip the shield. Now the way that I do this, I might have talked about this in another video, is I put red on pin two. So shield goes to pin one, red goes to pin two, and then the other color, which is sometimes black, sometimes white, or in this case blue, goes to pin three. So when I straighten out my shield, I want to make sure that the shield ends up opposite where the red comes out at the bottom. So I'm going to grab my tweezers, forceps, however you call them. I don't actually know. I'm going to split it there, pull it all back, go to the other side with it, get all the strands you can. And then twist them together. Now these say cut copper only and I am a legalist. So to cut these strings off, I'll use the scissors. I'm 
Whoop. Come on. There we go. Now four millimeters. You just kind of eyeball that. I've done enough of these in my life. That's about there. You might. Ooh, that looks different. Can you see that up close? I don't know. The conductors are actually all twisted inside that. That's nice. It's good stuff. Okay, now that's side one. Now we go to side two and do the same thing. And I guess technically I should, if this is cut copper only, I should be doing something else for the jacketing, but Pobody's nerfed. That's probably about 18 millimeters, eh? Oh yeah. Yeah, bud. Now we tidy up a bit. Got the soldering iron heating up. Unofficial soldering station. Alrighty. So we fill our cups up. Psalm 23, the cup runneth over. And then we want to tin the wires. You don't want to tin too far down the shield, otherwise it's really hard to work with. Whoa, careful. Shield on the outside. I wonder if it got a little cross threaded. I always get some of these a little loose.
Now we put it in and we check. Ta da! Straight line. We wiggle it around and we make sure that the intermittent lights don't come on. Good to go. We have ourselves a cable.